Hello, welcome back. I'm going to do a short video on creating all the G code or all the toolpaths for this uh, Tornado guitar body that I created in an earlier video. This is Fusion 360. Um, this is really cool stuff. If you have any questions, uh, just uh, send me a shout and uh, I'll see if I can. Uh, Answer anything that com comes up. This is going to be uh, pretty short. I'm not going to get into a huge amount of details here. Uh, what's interesting about uh, the cam part of it is it's it's very uh, I like to call it dynamic compared to creating the model. The model is pretty much static. You know, you kind of create the model it just kind of sits there. But all this cam stuff is very dynamic. You can do it different ways. You have many different speeds and feeds and all that stuff that has to be set as well. So anyway, here we go. I got two different setups. I got the top top face setup and I got the rear face setup. So uh, when I click on this top face, you can see that my X, Y, and Z are right here. This is the zero point. And you can also see the blank of the chunk of wood that I'm working with as well. If I go into here, collect edit, you can kind of see some of my um, things that I have selected um, in the setup. It's all pretty, pretty easy. And uh, as as you look down the list here, you'll see all these different functions or features. This is the uh, this is going to create all the tool paths uh, to create this part. So the first, uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the adaptive uh, clearing for the neck pocket. That is, that is this function right here. I can go to edit. And I can see a lot of the parameters that I've set. I'm, I'm looking at 90 inches a minute cut rate. I'm using a 3 8 inch uh, flat end mill. Um, it's an Amana carbide piece. Um, I'm also using 90 and uh, for my lead in my lead out and I'm using a little less for the ramp ramp and plunge feed rates um, This is pretty straightforward. I'm going to use those a lot pretty much I'm going to be consistent with those throughout this entire thing for the most part uh, Here I've selected this feature here as uh, to create the tool pass here are my heights Here's some um, things that you can control on the passes tab. You got you got five different tabs across the top here. Uh, you got multiple depths. You've got loads. You got all sorts of stuff. Uh, I'm taking pretty much a full depth cut here um, with a uh, 15 uh, 150 thousandths optimal load. That's how much. That's how much um, it's kind of taking swipes at it and it's moving. 150 thousands. Actually, I'm going to decrease that a little bit. I think when I did it on the first one, it was a little bit much. You got multiple debts. You got stock to leave. You got smoothing. The stock to leave, I'm going to leave 20 thousands, both radially and axially. And then I'm going to go back and kind of clean that up afterwards. So when I come back over here and I click on this, it will generate, you can see here, these are the tool paths. This is the center of the tool. Um, the next, this is the uh, pocket. This is the 2D pocket function here. So this is just kind of doing a cleanup um, for the pickup cavities. I'm, I'm doing the same adaptive clearing here for both of these cavities in the ears. Uh, once again, you have many different things you can set and you can change. I go to edit. I'm kind of keeping these all the same. Actually, I'm going to change this to 75. I'm going to change that to 75. And then uh, those are the, um, the features that I've selected to create those tool paths. Those six features are changed. Um, there's some things there. Contours. Here's the passes again, and you can do you can um, select a lot of different things here. Once again, that optimal loading is uh, 130 thousandths per swipe, kind of. And then I'm also dropping down 
point two. Actually, I'm going to increase it to point three. That's the step down. Um, so we're smoothing. I'm not going to leave any stock because this is the, the the cavity for the pickups. It's not real important. At least it's not as important as the neck pocket. That that's going to create going to create these tool paths. Lots of math going on here. Pretty cool though. Next is the outside perimeter. It's going to it's going to uh, take multiple passes. Let's go ahead and regenerate these. I don't know why for some reason. Let's take a second to regenerate. You got to have a pretty decent internet connection because this is all done out on the cloud somewhere. All this math. This is pretty easy on your computer. And once again, you can kind of see, um, this is the adaptive clearing. Actually, this is the 3D adaptive clearing, because now we're working in multiple planes here. We're working three-dimensionally. Uh, so that's what this is. You can see this feature looks a little different. And then same thing with the contour. This is uh, a 3D contour uh, located here. That's this function right here. And this is doing the cleanup. So if I look at this one first, um, once again, you have many different things you can select. Um, I'm leaving some material on here, both axially and radially. Um, stepping down 35 thousandths at a time. And there's some things in here that I could probably do different that would improve it, but I'm still learning. Okay, and then here, same thing. This is actually kind of cool because I'm just, you know, it just recognizes what's left, that 20 thousandths material. And then you can see here, it's in this rest machining from previous, uh, from previous operation. So it just kind of says, hey, I'm just going to go in here and just kind of clean that up. So... Let's go ahead and run the go ahead and run it and see what it looks like. So here's the simulation. So um, I've got my uh, stock on, so it looks like it's a chunk of wood, which is really what's gonna it's gonna look like when it starts. And here we go, just hit the button. And it's doing the adaptive clearing first for the pocket. It's gonna clean it all that out. And I can kind of jump around here. You can actually, you can come down here and click on these, or you can actually jump on this. You can change the speed as well. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So you can actually see the steps being created in this roughing. For some reason, it slows down when you zoom in and out. I don't know why it does that. Maybe it thinks you might miss something, I don't know. But that's the rough. And then it comes back in here with the uh, all end mill and it kind of cleans it up. So that is the whole front side. So when we want to take a look at the rear, and the rear is pretty much very similar. A lot of the similar functions, and you can kind of copy some of them over as well, if you like. 
Come on. There we go. That's a better. Yeah, let's do it like that. Okay, so once again, here's my X, Y, and Z. Here's my zero point, and this is what I use on the router when I go to uh, set up zero on my router. Um, pretty straightforward. Here are the uh, functions. So I'm going to go ahead and generate these. And like I said, they're very similar to what we're doing on the other side. Just said, um, adaptive clearings. Um, a, a three-dimensional adaptive clearing here for the rough, this relief, and then the, the finish. And uh, you can kind of see those there. On these, I actually go in and kind of use this pocket command, 2D, kind of make sure that this floor is nice and clean. Because my pots are going to be you know, connected to that. They're going to be flush up on there. And same thing with the switch. Then I'm also creating this little uh, ledge um, for the covers, this cover and this cover. And then uh, we have the, uh, like I said, the, um, the relief here on the back side. So here it goes. And you can kind of see this as it goes. I'm going to make a little change here for that pocket. I should be able to do a rest machine on that. It wouldn't do this, I don't think. This takes up some time. You're wasting some time here on the, on the piece. And then you're cleaning, the, you're adding those shoulders for the covers. And then we're roughing all this up. And then here we are with the ball end mill, kind of cleaning up. I'm pretty much using a 3 8 three eighths end mill, a half inch end mill, and a half inch ball end mill. Those are my three primary tools. I might still using a bull nose. I think I might get some, some better contours maybe with the bull nose. Um, but that's it. Thanks for watching. If you got any questions, go ahead and shoot them my way. Thanks. Bye.